Hi, welcome everyone. Thank you so much for taking the time to subscribe to this research channel. Greatly appreciate it. Some incredible news coming in about space. I want to share it with you. Uh, Mountain View, California, up to 80% of the Starlink satellites just recently launched by SpaceX last week will soon, or if they already haven't, re-enter. What does that mean? Because a geomagnetic storm kept the spacecraft from raising their orbits. SpaceX said late on February 8th, 2022, that 49 satellites had been launched on February 3rd and were affected by a geomagnetic storm the next day. Such storms triggered by solar activity like coronal mass ejections can increase the density of the upper atmosphere, including at the initial low orbit SpaceX uses to check out Starlink satellite before raising them to their higher operational orbits. Onboard GPS suggests the escalation speed and severity of the storm caused atmospheric drag to increase up to 50% higher than during previous launches. The Starlink team commanded the satellites into a safe mode where they would fly edge on like a sheet of paper to minimize drag to effectively take over from the storm. If all the satellites are at the same level and height before they're raised to another orbit, why are there nine remaining, yet 40 out of the 49 launched of Elon satellites destroyed or going to re-enter if they already haven't? Why, though? So, in theory, not to freak anybody out, there's Venus on the bottom, two different launches here, one of uh, 120 satellites and one of uh, 60 satellites. So... What if they were shot down by aliens? Have you noticed how many launches and problems, even some other ones that I'm not even mentioning that have happened in the past week? Do aliens exist? <laughs> well, they maybe do. We can't assume that China's that advanced and attacking even you know objects in space. So, of course, it comes down to um, hello, UFO. It comes down, guys, to the sun, right? Also, too many factors. And everything and anything we, we talk about, um, and look at the size difference, guys. That's the UFO in the bottom right that I caught over the house, and those are the satellites up in the sky before they rise in orbit. Look how low they look. And the blinding spots that you see in the bottom is because they're just um, turning their uh, reflectors, right? towards the sun and away from earth not to blind any large telescopes this is all you know was all talked about but look at the size of this object coming down to the house and isn't it or is it a coincidence that a year after oh my gosh not even guys three months after the U, uh, ufo uap report they started talking about it for the first time saying hey um, there's lights buzzing around our ships here on Earth, and we have no idea where they're coming from. We don't know if it's a, an outside threat from an adversarial country like China or Russia. Makes you really think about what's going on. I'm filming all these lights on the moon, and even some, yes, rarely, but by chance, had a, I had a chance to see them come down to the house. Those are the satellites uh, with a view in infrared. Quite simply, I wanted you guys to get a quick look at it. When they... Uh, go by as a supposed satellite train and that I only film it for about 9 to 15 seconds guys once it comes over the horizon you can see these satellites for me anyways on my end I guess some of you see it going over your head I get it for me when they turned the mirrors they all disappeared and I was able to film that the first time I showed the satellite train those mirrors that are reflective is what's making that um, shine but once they turn and ra rise in orbit don't even think you're going to be able to see them very well with the infrared maybe sure but still not proven the plasma underlying the solar wind it grows significantly hotter becomes noticeably denser as you see here and it pops out of the sun in rapid fire orbs of goo as they say capable of engulfing entire planets for minutes or hours at a time. Scary stuff. 
Officially, these solar burps, as they call them, are called periodic density structures. That's what you're looking at. But astronomers have nicknamed them the blobs. August 2019, enormous cannonballs of plasma were spotted hurtling around the sun. The sun is full of fireballs. Huge blobs of hot plasma have been spotted hurtling through the sun's chromosphere, the area between the surface and its outer atmosphere. And they, that could help explain how the sun's atmosphere gets so hot. So a lot of things come into factor yet again. And there's a lot of things that I don't mention when I show the sun, like the little bit of studies that I'm doing myself. Have you ever heard of ball lightning? Well, ball lightning, it's an unexplained actually phenomenon. It's described as luminescent, if you look it up, spherical objects that vary from pea-sized to several meters in diameter. Could there be any ball lightning seen around the moon could any of the objects that I see be ball lightning? And again, it's unknown. Look it up to see what it looks like. It's, it looks like a ball of fire traveling across the sky right here on Earth, that is. You can't put all the UFO sightings in the same basket, nor can you designate or class them as the same object. This is a triangular structure going by a UFO at fast speeds. But sometimes some of the things that we see could be debris, could be asteroids, and now even plasma balls. So my goal isn't to lie to you all and to tell you that the moon's inhabited with aliens and that they're all over the bloody universe. There are also many tons and thousands of objects that are debris. But by analyzing the characteristics, and I've done it myself in a very short period of time, I've been able to very easily prove the different characteristics of many different sightings that are not all categorized as the same object. That is one truth that we heard from the Pentagon and the three branches of military was that, that there's several captures and they cannot all be put in the same category. They've been researching for 70 years and documenting what's in the sky. Say to yourself that. I don't have to do like troll channels, like Limey Watcher and Ace of Space to pretend and to show just pictures of a light near the moon. Oh, look, a light beside the moon, guys. What could it be? Could it be a star? Probably most likely it is. But are these stars? Because we know stars don't land on the surface of the moon. So that's proof in itself that there are different characteristics. Those fireballs roaming around the sun that are stuck in the chromosphere, could they crash back down onto the sun? And when I say onto the sun, they say the sun is just gas, ionized um, plasma, right? Well, I don't know. Is the sun solid? I sometimes believe that it could be solid and we could actually land on it, right? Change, let's go a different twist. I want to show, I want to show you the objects ah, 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 that I captured smashing into the moon. Massive smoke plumes and fire lifting up off the surface of the moon. All this is going on under our noses. Hey, each and every day, probably something crashing down onto the moon that we're just not there to see every chance, imagine. But many times I was able to capture objects hitting the moon. And there's one going to hit the moon and you even see something lift up off the surface, which would be many thousands of feet in the air. Look at it come down slowly. Now, this is not easy to show. Check it out. Right? And it slowed down because it wasn't as fast as a rocket, but it was as fast as something that was like out of control going to crash down on the moon. And we can see there on the northeast side of the moon, something smashing into the moon, literally. Um, I show you this close up, but I'm going to zoom it out for, I don't think it's the first time, but a long time ago I showed this. Now watch this. It turns its nose, whatever it is, and a point of light um, points up towards the top there of the image. And you'll, well, the video actually is slowed down. You're going to see other objects appearing, but watch what happens with the light. It'll light up, change directions literally, and then, coincidence or not, pointing the same way look what happens a light appears at the end they are shooting something on the surface and look there's other lights 
appearing around this light. Now, this light is not small. It's a whole mile or two wide that's appearing, and another light appears with a dark spot. Guys, it's UFOs on the moon, which is absolutely incre incredible. Have you ever seen those just arriving to the channel? Smokes, hazes, or clouds in footage? Watch this. In the footage here, you can see UFOs in the other frames, but look at the light that appears in the bottom and then goes out. It's stationary. They're under the hazes. Wow. Right on the moon, hiding underneath the hazes. Here's uh, some there. So, again, we talked about ball lightning. Different shapes and forms, guys. Look that up. More and more, I'll be talking about it. It sounds crazy, you say? Talking about ball lightning, uh, especially if you don't know what it, what it is. It's a rare phenomenon, lightning. Lightning, cloud-like, electrical storm that moves in the, a shape or form. They have different structures, they call them, and a whole bunch of different shapes and forms. It's just absolutely crazy. Those of you who don't understand how I'm seeing lights on the surface or how they could be hiding on the surface when, they, when nobody sees anything, it's all under the hazes. And those, uh, a lot of lights that are moving around under those hazes. We don't know if those hazes are actually atmosphere, natural, or maybe industrial production, mining. Who knows? Again, just theories. But boy, tell you what, it really is interesting. Um, all the possible theories that we can bring up. Ladies and gents, I hope you liked the video. Thanks so much for today's live streams, Michael, and everyone for the contributions. Cause the slow just coming soon. This slow just coming soon.